Hi, it's Kristen, and I am going to tackle my TBR. My TBR has got quite out of hand, as you may be able to see. Um, I just have too many books on it, and I'm going to try and make my way through those books, and I thought a way to maybe motivate me and to create content would be to uh, take them in like chunks around a certain topic or theme. So I thought for the first one I'm going to read all the books that are on my pile that are actually not mine that I've borrowed. So I have four books here. The first one is from the library and it is Along the Infinite Sea by Beatrice Williams. I got this from the library ages ago and always meant to read it and then return it quite quickly but we went into lockdown so then I didn't feel the need to read it immediately because the library sort of extended everyone's holds um, and made it easier to like renew online if you needed to and then they opened back up so I was like okay I need to read it and return it and then we went into another lockdown and so on and so forth. This is about two women, I believe, uh, one in 1966 and one in 1935, and I think it's just about their lives, their interactions with men, um, so that's the first book I'm going to get to. These next three are all from a book exchange. There was an old telephone box in my area which someone um, did up and put a bunch of books in so people can take books and sort the books and things like that, which is very nice. Um, I visited there when they first sort of did it up and have had these books in my room for about two years now. Um, not read them, but obviously need to return them. It's not that they need returning because there's like a time limit on them, it's just why have I had these for so long in my room if I'm not going to get around to reading them? Um, so the first one is Their Finest by Lissa Evans. I'm just covering this because it has like the area I live in on it, on the sticker. I saw a movie trailer, this is the movie cover for this and thought it sounded really interesting and then realised there was a book when I saw this. Um, this is about a woman who is brought into the world of propaganda films um, during the Second World War and I thought that just sounded really interesting um, and I want to read this so I can watch the movie because it's got a great cast. It's Sam Claflin, Gemma Arthurson and Bill Nye and I'm just really interested in that. The next up we have The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I don't really know what this one's about, but it was massively hyped a few years ago um, and I just thought I'd give it a go. Uh, I know that this is also a sort of period piece, uh, 1893 is what this says. Uh, when Cora Stevenson's husband dies, she steps into her new life as a widow with as much relief as sadness. Not fully sure what it's about, if it's just about her life after being widowed. Um, but I'm interested to get into it and this cover is just beautiful. And finally we have Prophecy of the Sisters by Michelle Zink. This one says, without the keys something terrible will happen, something that cannot be undone, and with them I might bring an end to the riddle of the prophecy and my strange part in it. If Alice and I are, are on conflicting sides of the prophecy, the keys would be dangerous in her hands, which means I have to find them and I have to do it before my sister. And that was all I read. The cover got my attention initially. And I read that and I thought that sounded really creepy, but really interesting. And that is sort of all I want to know going into it. So I've got four books here that are all borrowed from various places. And if I can read these and get them off my shelves, that would significantly reduce the height of one of my stacks of books. So these are the four books I need to read for this Tackling My TBR of Borrowed Books. So I'm 56 
six pages into Prophecy of the Sisters and I have to say I'm not feeling super engaged. <laughs> Feels quite like almost as if the writing's a bit distant. Like I'm not feeling connected to any of the characters. I feel like I'm being told a lot of stuff about like how the sisters feel about each other or about their brother or about their family friend. I'm being told these things but I'm not necessarily seeing much of it in the text. Um, and also it's set in the past, it's set in the 1800s. But I feel like the language is trying too much to be like sound old that it just sounds unnatural um which isn't an issue i have with most historical fiction so it's not just that i don't like that kind of thing um but i'm not connecting to it in this novel i mean there's enough intrigue that i do want to know what is going on but it's not because i'm like tense i'm just like i want to know what the purpose of the book is <laughs> So yeah, that's my thoughts so far. I'm finding this reading experience really weird because like, stuff has happened, but it feels like nothing has happened. And I'm <laughs> like a good chunk, like halfway through the book. And I know the main tension. And I keep being told by the characters that it's tense. And this this quote literally says, ours is not a quest for cowards. And they keep talking about how crazy and dangerous the situation is and I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't feel tense. It's like I think there's just a disconnect between the writing and me because I don't, like, feel anything when I'm reading it. Like, I'll read pages at a time and be like, what have I read? Nothing's happened. I'm getting a little annoyed with just, like, how many conversations are being had where the characters just assume that, like, things they've learned mean certain things. So the main characters heard the prophecy of the sisters um, and it's about like well, how one's good and one's evil and one's like the guardian and one's the gate um, and she's just like made up her mind that she's the guardian and her sister's the gate which like <laughs> I guess you would want to assume that you were the guardian um, which is the good one but she just makes that assumption and then when she talks to some friends who sort of get involved in the mystery they also just make that assumption and it's just a lot of characters making assumptions about various bits of information they've heard that they don't really know about and they just decide that something is true or that's what something means and there'll be another conversation where they learn more information which just like easily falls into their lap or they don't have to go like looking or having to figure out themselves particularly and it's annoying me because she's just quite passive and I like you know active main characters she doesn't have to be a badass she doesn't have to go all out but like she's just learning things from convenience and from other people telling her things and then she also just like readily goes along with everything and doesn't really question all the weird shit that's happening to her <laughs> i'm not massively feeling this book but i'm about halfway through so i'll probably finish it <laughs> so last night i finally finished <laughs> Prophecy of the Sisters by Michelle Zink. Um, this is really aching my arm. <laughs> I got my um, first COVID jab today. 
which is wonderful and I'm really glad but my arm just feels really heavy um, and kind of dead so I'm gonna not hold this up <laughs> if that's okay um, so yeah I finished Prophecy of the Sisters and thought it was okay kind of mediocre for me personally I just had a lot of trouble connecting to the writing at all I said before that it was written quite formally and I think that was because uh, she was trying to do um, she was trying to evoke the historical setting through the way that the characters spoke and um, the main characters in a dialogue and all that but I don't know that it seemed very natural um, it was often like too wordy or too formal a way to say something that I just don't think is the way that someone would have spoken um, or the way that you would internally think um, so I found it hard to connect to the writing and then because of that I found it difficult to connect to the characters um, a lot of the side characters didn't feel fleshed out at all so I sort of wondered why I was supposed to care about them because it was like I don't know anything about these characters <laughs> and I did I did like the premise and like the angle of like where things were going or could go or the relationships between characters a lot of the central relationships uh, with the characters whether familial or uh, friendship uh, were between women which I really appreciated but I thought could have been done better and considering that the whole premise is supposed to be two sisters one good one evil we <sighs> didn't get to see them interact that much and there was sort of like no basis we were just told that they've never really got along but then in other moments the main character was like oh we touch our foreheads together the way we always used to when we were kids and it's like so did you get along or did you not <laughs> what what is the truth um and their relationship whether good or bad was never really built up for me to feel like this was a life changing um connection or disconnection for them this prophecy that puts them on like two ends of the spectrum i never felt like i cared because they never built their relationship for me to think oh my goodness this is a huge thing between them i feel like it was just the main character finding out information about the prophecy and herself and her part in the prophecy and then just assuming the worst of her sister which to be fair was often true <laughs> but she would just assume things without actually having facts or like basis for it she'd just think oh there's a good one and an evil one the prophecy obviously i'm the good one and my sister's the evil one and it was like i mean sure that's your perspective on your personalities but like you don't know that <laughs> technically you don't know that um you're just fully assuming that your sister is evil <laughs> um so yeah considering that was the whole premise i never felt like there was much um tension or like we didn't get enough backstory to know what they had been like um we were just sort of told a lot of things and not shown um which was my main massive gripe with the um love interest i feel like we were just constantly told that they liked each other and we we did see like friendly moments with them but we didn't get much of a backstory between them and the book sort of towards the end that she is like fully writing this letter to him they're like confessing things or telling him things and just explaining how she feels and I was just like I don't get this he like disappeared for whole points of the book 
and was never really considered and he didn't feel like a central enough character for me to care about them being in love. Um, I actually think there was <laughs> way more development between her and Sonia who's a girl around her age that she meets who starts like teaching her things about powers and traveling in dreams and stuff that she can do. I think that was probably the most built up relationship um, which would clearly build up more in the second book because this is part of a series, it's the first book in a series which I will not be continuing with which is a shame because I thought like the whole premise sounds so interesting I love books about family and prophecies and like good and evil and people who have strong relationships or like really personal histories potentially turning against each other I love that kind of idea but this book um it just didn't execute it very well which is a shame because I've had this on my <laughs> I've had this borrowed from um the book exchange for so long I had it on my tbr for so long I finally got around to it and was so disappointed um but yeah on to the next book hopefully I'll enjoy it more <laughs> so the other day I started reading Their Finest all I knew going into this was that it was about um, a woman who got pulled into making um, or assisting with um, propaganda films so we've been introduced to a few characters so far I assumed it was all going to be from um, Katrin's point of view or following her but we've actually got a couple of um, people that we're following. So there's, first of all, um, a man whose name I have already forgotten. Ambrose. But he used to be like a leading man kind of actor and now he's getting a bit older. Um, the industry is not seeing him in that kind of context anymore um they see him more as um a side character uh the older gentleman like a dad type rather than uh the romantic hero um which he is not happy about so that's sort of what we know of him so far. He is in one of the, or keeps getting asked to do the um, propaganda films. And then we have Katrin, who is a young woman. She, I believe, is like 19, 20. Um, and she works in advertising. She has been given like a new um project to work on to sell or just advertise um like home goods that kind of thing and she's created this campaign that's um all centers on these like two young women um talking about their husbands talking about life um, and she gets an interview from the Ministry of Information, I believe, who are the ones who make the propaganda films because they think that she would be of use to them in terms of making their um, propaganda films seem more realistic because they said they been making these films and they'd shown them to test audiences and the test audiences weren't gelling with what they were producing. Their test audiences were a lot of young women who thought that um, the films weren't believable, weren't likeable, they didn't relate to them. So Katrin's brought in as a female's perspective, uh, someone to make the films more believable, realistic, etc. And so then I thought we were just going to follow those two characters, Ambrose and Catherine. But the past chapter, um, 
we were introduced to a character called um, Edith, I believe. Edith, who is a 36 year old woman who is um, living uh, in a house with uh, another family because she can't afford to live on her own, she's unmarried. Um, so she's living in a house with another family and their house uh, just got um, bombed. So that's literally all, <laughs> all we really know about her character or her um, circumstances. So those are the three characters that we're sort of following so far, Ambrose, Katrin and Edith. I don't know if we're gonna get more of those characters um obviously we're gonna get more of Katrin and she and Ambrose have already crossed paths so I'm wondering if Edith will also cross paths with them I'm enjoying it so far it's yeah not not exactly what I thought it would be in terms of I didn't realize we were gonna get multiple points of view or multiple like people that were following I assumed it was just gonna be following um Katrin and then the people she interacts with. Because we've got three points of view within 80 pages, I've not massively connected to any of the characters yet because um, I've spent little time with them. But um, I'm interested to see where it goes. So we're deeper into the like film making now of the feature film. And I am enjoying this and I'm finding it interesting, but it is quite slow. Um, also we've added in another character which we're sort of doing, it's not from like his viewpoint but it's following him, but his name is Arthur and we already have a character called Ambrose. I know those two names aren't similar but they both begin with A and they're both like the same sort of length when you like glance at the page so I keep getting confused as to like who I'm reading about um, and then like halfway <laughs> through a page or um, whatever I'll realise that oh no we're <laughs> this is the other character um, because they're in the same setting um, yeah so that <laughs> it's got me a couple of times but that just might be me and my attention span um, I sort of don't know where this is going and also because we've got more points of view now there's like four characters that we're continuously following we'll follow one character for just like a couple of pages and then switch to another character and then we'll follow them for like a whole chunk and then we'll go on to another character and then the other character and then we eventually go back to the first character and I sort of forget <laughs> that they're a character whose viewpoint we're in or like so much will seem to have happened time-wise that I'm like oh yeah what has that character been up to this entire time? I don't think this is going to be a favourite um, at the moment it's like a decent um, 3, 3.5 star um, and yeah, I'm not sure where it's going, so we will see. Last night I finished reading Their Finest. What are my thoughts on this book? <laughs> we follow Katrin, Ambrose, and then a few chapters in we're introduced to Edith as like another person we're following. And then another chunk of the way in the book we're introduced to Arthur, who we also follow. And although all the characters do interact um, or like sort of cross over at um, various points um, and to various degrees during the book, the storylines feel quite separate. I feel like Ambrose and Katrin very much are focused on the film and um, the, their careers in acting and writing respectively and then Arthur and Edith 
is more about um, relationships and um, just like living everyday life kind of thing and I just I feel like they were very separate even though the characters do interact and like they meet each other on like film sets and stuff um, but they felt like two different stories and as someone who was first like introduced to the idea of their finest um, because I saw like film advertisements I did not expect Arthur and Edith as characters because there was no suggestion of that on the blurb um, in the synopsis and all the film stuff I'd seen was just um, like Catherine and Ambrose and then the head writer so I would be interested now to watch the film and see if Edith and Arthur are even characters in it because I feel like you could cut them out quite easily and it would have no effect on the storyline particularly um, but yeah so I'm still interested in seeing the film it's not that I didn't enjoy the book and it turned me off I just thought it was a bit um, disjointed in places and it was quite slow paced but I didn't ever feel bored um, it's massively character driven so if you like character driven stories um, like historical fiction and if you like stories that are set like during World War II but aren't explicitly about the war because obviously they talk about the war there's bombings and stuff like that but it's just about people living their lives and making a film about the war um, yeah which I thought was interesting and I always like to see like a different take rather than just fighting and I did like the end I liked how everything wrapped up for each character um, the parts they sort of were set on by the end um, yeah so I did enjoy it but it wasn't fantastic it was like a three star kind of book but I'm glad I read it I, as someone who's very into like film and acting and stuff, I thought it was interesting to get perspectives on how films were made. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed my time reading it. It's not necessarily one that I would reread, um, but I'm glad I read it and I am still interested in watching the film. So that's book two of this video done. I am back from having my second Covid chat. Yay. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to take it easy this afternoon um, just to see like more easily monitor any possible side effect symptoms. Um, if I'm just relaxing. Uh, so I'm going to start The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Um, I've heard like only good things about this but I sort of don't know what it's about so I'm excited to get into it and I will let you know what I think in my next update. So I'm on page 124 now I feel like the first hundred pages, nothing really happened. Like the first hundred pages, the amount of storyline there was, could have been done in like half of that. Um, I saw. I don't know where this story is going, and I also find it interesting because I think I previously said that I'd heard like nothing but good things. But actually when I went to put uh, that I was reading this on Goodreads, um, it only has like a 3.5 rating, 
which isn't bad, but considering I thought it was really highly praised because, like, the year it came out, it was huge. It was, like, on all the tables, um, like, at the front of the store in, like, Waterstones and foils and stuff. I thought it was, like, really highly acclaimed um, or just really generally loved, but maybe that's not the case. Um, I'm not loving it, but I am going to continue because I feel like I'm getting through it. I mean, I still have a huge chunk left to go, but I feel like I'm getting through it fairly quickly. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how I feel. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a very middle of the road book to me though. I'm not going to lie. So I just got out the shower, um, but I thought I'd update on the Essex Serpent whilst I remember. Um, I finished it last night and I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would initially when I started it and I was like a hundred pages in and nothing had happened. I thought oh, it's going to be like a slog to get through, but actually I ended up really quite liking it. I got into the characters more and whilst I do think that plot wise not a lot happens. Um, I thought the relationships between the characters were interesting and once Cora, um, sort of the main character, gets to Old Winter where the Essex Serpent is rumoured to be, um, I really liked the like vibe, the setting, because um, it's sort of like a marshy gloomy village um, and I thought the descriptions and the kind of mysterious um, setting was great. I really liked um, sort of the pictures it conjured in my head, like the aesthetic I had in my head. Um, so yeah, if you like kind of weird books with not a lot of plot but complicated character dynamics. Um, I'd recommend this one. Give it 3.5, 3.75 to be pedantic because um, the beginning was slow enough that I can't give it like a solid four stars because there were parts I was like, okay, let's move on. Um, and 100 pages is normally quite far in for me to still be wondering where it's going. But overall, very much enjoyed it. So I am on to the final book uh, that I have borrowed from somewhere. Uh, this one is from the library um the library system in my city and it is Along the Infinite Sea by Beatrice Williams. This one is a dual timeline. One timeline takes place in 1966 and one in 1935. Don't know a whole lot about it. I was drawn to it because of the cover. But I love a period drama um so I'm excited to get to this and then be able to return all my books. So yesterday I was like updating my Goodreads for the book I'm currently reading, which is this one, and I realised that it said that it was a Skylar or Shula sister book three. So apparently there's more in this series that come before this, um, but I did look at some reviews and they did say that you could read them as like a companion novels that aren't necessarily connected and it's just sort of like you'd recognise the names of other characters um, but that it's not like necessary plot wise. So that's fine, I'll continue reading it. <laughs> um, I am not sure how I feel about this book because the 1966 timeline I don't really care about but I am enjoying the 1935 timeline. So. I'm not massively far into it. I'm under 100 pages in, 
so I'm gonna stick with it for at least a little bit longer. So for all my saying, like, I'm not really invested in one of the timelines, but I am interested in the other timeline. I'm really invested <laughs> in um, Annabelle, who is like our main character in that timeline, and her relationship with Stefan. It like fulfills a lot of the tropes I like. He gets injured and she has to look after him and they're just stuck on this yacht together for like a couple of weeks. Um, and it's like a very tentative, um, they're trying to feel each other out and see what they think of each other. Um, and also being a bit like flirty and bantery and I I'm very into it <laughs> uh, but I don't know where it's going and I'm nervous it's going somewhere not good <laughs> okay so I'm actually genuinely nervous <laughs> about the route this book is taking like I feel like it's going somewhere bad. Not in that the book is bad, but in terms of I'm actually really invested <laughs> now um, in Annabelle and Stefan Stefan's um, story. I really like them as characters. I really like their dynamic and their relationship. But now he said he needs to go off on his own and like sort something out and then he'll come back for her and I'm like on one hand I really like him and I think it's like really romantic and he's really lovely so is he too good to be true and he's gonna do something or because of the circumstances of how they met and him like previously having been injured um is something gonna happen to him and i don't know and is something gonna happen to him while he's away and annabelle's not gonna know and she's just gonna think he left her oh my gosh <laughs> i'm like genuinely nervous about their relationship because I really like I really like them um yeah I think the build-up was really well done even though like it's not actually like that many pages um like I'm not massively far in I'm like a hundred pages in and only like part of that is even in this timeline but I'm so invested and I think this is sort of my problem with this book. If it was just their storyline, if all that had happened so far was just like focusing on Annabelle and Stefan, this honestly currently is giving me like five star book kind of feelings. And I haven't read a five star book or like a book that's given me like feelings where I'm like, yeah, this just feels like a five star. There's a fly. I haven't read a five star feeling book in so long and I'm loving their storyline. But the other timeline, I just am not like nowhere near as invested in. I'm like interested enough in that I'm like, I wonder where this is going and there's sort of like obvious sort of mystery-ish elements to like one of the characters' backgrounds and I sort of want to know what's going on but I am nowhere as much like just like I don't even know <laughs> um yeah I'm nowhere near as invested in the second storyline which means that this like as a whole unless it like goes somewhere really brilliant can't be a five star book which is a shame
pretty good beer four star. I don't know, maybe I should read more of it <laughs> before I start making these judgments. Um, but yes, I am very much enjoying at least one aspect of it. Um, I will let you know more as I get further in. Something just happened in the book that legitimately made my jaw drop. <laughs> I don't know how we're coming back from this, lads. <sighs> I won't say what it is because it's a massive spoiler, but... read on. <laughs> okay. What a coherent update this was. <laughs> I put my camera down and then I was like, no, I need to talk about this more. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like mild spoilers, not really. Um, the thing that had me like, um, is to do with Stefan. I feel like the only thing that sums up my feelings <laughs> would be that clip of Tyra Banks yelling at that model <laughs> when she's like, I was rooting for you, we were all rooting for you. That's very much how I feel. I sort of don't know what to think of this now because uh, there's another character who's um, who's been in the 1930s plot but is becoming more prominent and is striking up a friendship relationship with Annabelle who's the main character we're following in that timeline and like on page he's been nice and helpful but he's like a high-ranking German man in the 1930s who one of the other characters commented that he's probably a Nazi am I supposed to like him? because if he's a Nazi then I don't. <laughs> so I like obviously this is going to include the war, and they made a point earlier of saying that Stefan, who Annabelle, um, had the re relationship with, um, was Jewish. And then I like reread the synopsis and it talks about how Annabelle has like torn between two very different men and two very different endings. And I'm like, <clears throat> there's no love triangle to it that like, I'd be like, who's she gonna end up with when one of them is a Nazi? So like, I don't know where this is going because, good god. <laughs> it's because like, one revelation after the other when it comes to relationships, it's making me very emotional. <laughs> For the most part, I like Stefan again. Do I think he should have said something before? Yes. Do I think there's a fine line between being mysterious and protective and um, just concealing and patronising? Yes. Do I think he walked that line quite finely at times? Also yes. Um, but I'll forgive him. <laughs> I'm really worried this is going to end, very sadly. I think that would make the most realistic sense. Um, 
but I don't want that to happen, so... <laughs> and I just finished Long It Let It See. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> I literally cried through like the last <laughs> 30 plus pages um, and I can't stop crying. <laughs> I will give you more coherent thoughts tomorrow um, <laughs> when I'm not like this um, and when the lighting is better um, but yeah I really love so that last clip was an absolute mess. Let's collectively acknowledge that now. <laughs> um, but yes, last night I finished reading Along the Infinite Sea by Beatrice Williams. And it, it just made me so emotional, as you saw. <laughs> I found the ending really sad and touching and just a whole heap of emotions because it, it was sad in parts but it was also hopeful um it was also like it, there was like another reveal um it was quite the roller coaster <laughs> overall i really enjoyed this book it's not quite a five star for me, even though I clearly was very affected by it. That's because it took me a while to get into it, and even though I did eventually warm up to Pepper and her timeline and those characters in um, 1966, um, while I ended up enjoying and caring about them, I didn't care about them particularly at all initially and even when I did care about them I still didn't um I wasn't as invested as I was in the 1930s timeline which yeah I was always wanting to go back to the 1930s timeline and Annabelle's story that's not to say I don't think it should have been dual timeline because having the 60s timeline was actually very integral to adding to like the mysteriousness and the tension coming like off from the 30s timeline um, and added like a lot to the book um, but I just I didn't care as much about that storyline um, also the ending whilst it made me sob. Um, I don't know if there's a part of me that thinks maybe it was a little bit rushed in the sort of like epilogue. Um, that's where there's sort of like another, things become more clear. Um, but then it all wraps up quite quickly. Again, like I don't know how else she would have done it, but, um, yeah, and that's not to say I disliked, disliked the ending, because I, I have very mixed emotions, I was very emotional, <laughs> um, but I did, I, I did enjoy it overall. I would recommend, generally, to people who love, like, generational stories, tragic love stories, the love story in this was was really um really affected me um <laughs> um yeah it's heartbreaking it's hopeful it's like every time something good happens something bad happens but then when something bad happens something good often comes out of it it's 
it's it's a real roller coaster. Trigger warning was in this. There are some not like graphic death scenes, um, but there are sort of like bodies and the condition of bodies um, described. Also, um, trigger warnings for a lot of um, anti-Semitism, not in like the, not that the book is, obviously, but that there are characters who are anti-Semitic, obviously it's the late 1930s, so like it's generally the story of like the Nazi party gaining more traction. So there are characters in here who are part of the Nazi party, which we're obviously, as readers, not meant to agree with. The characters that say um, anti-Semitic things we're not meant to agree with. Um, Annabelle, who's the main character, also doesn't agree with them and she argues against them. Um, but there is that, that content in here. Um, also at one point, um, one of the characters does visit a camp where they are keeping prisoners and Jewish people. So yeah, content warning for um, Nazism, anti-Semitism, hatred and persecution of Jewish people. Um, if you can read about those things, um, it's not an easy read. Obviously I was like sobbing my way through the last part of this, um, but I think, obviously I can't speak from that experience, I'm not a Jewish person, um, but I think it was handled um, sensitively. I thought I'd just do one quick final wrap up of the books I read for this first Tackling My TBR video. So I think actually the order I read the books in <laughs> was like unintentionally because I didn't know what I would think of the books. Um, very beneficial to my experience because we started off with a two-star book that I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, I don't care about <laughs> putting this back in my book exchange. Goodbye to the Prophecy of the Sisters. Then I read a sort of meh, meh three-star book. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be necessarily, completely. Um, I'm glad I read it and I am interested in watching the film more so now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take that back to the book exchange as well. Then I read another three star book, although this one's more like maybe 3.5, because um, I really like the atmosphere of this one. Um, I'm glad I read this one. Uh, and I'll also be taking that back to the book exchange. And then I finished on a really solid four star book, um, which I will be taking back to the library. I do want to see if the library has maybe the other ones in the series or anything else by this author, Beatrice Williams, because I really liked her writing. So I would definitely be interested in reading more from her um, libraries are open again, but I think I'm going to wait a bit longer to properly go in and browse um, just until things have died down a bit more. Um, but yeah, really glad I read this one. Overall, mostly happy that I read all of those. I could have could have done without Prophecy of the Sisters, really. Um, but I'm really glad that I got through them because these have all been sitting on my shelves for ages. Um, so I'm glad I got to them and I can return them and I can get them out of my house. Um, but yeah, it took me a while <laughs> to get through all of these, but um, I do feel kind of accomplished <laughs> having done so. I know it's just reading and so you shouldn't necessarily feel 
accomplished or not accomplished through reading but just as a personal thing I'm glad I was able to get to these. It's been nice to be able to read them within this year building up to the point where I can safely return them to where they came from. Um, so yes, four books read for this one. Enjoyed most of them, ended on a high. A good start to this challenge. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye!